All right, man, peace. So now this is going to be another entry into the Hell Half No Fury <laughs> Like a Woman Scorn series. And it's going to star this young female here, Miss Amber Cutter. Even though to look at her last name, it looks like it should be spelled Amber Cooter. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, anyway, this female here was involved in a relationship with a so-called black man who she states she was friends with for a long period of time. And due to the fact that he had a previous relationship with a female that he seems to still be dallying with, it led to a series of trust issues. And of course, it's going to provide me with a backdrop to speak on certain issues and little subtopics, even introducing the element of interracial relationships. Oftentimes, particularly over the internet, there's a big hullabaloo over whether or not the the dynamic between the black male and black female is something that the black male will not experience with women of the other races meaning there's oftentimes a spirit or a vibration between the so-called black man and woman where there is a stipulation that the problems that exist between the so-called black man and woman will not exist if the so-called black man deals with a woman of another race we know that that is not true. There are issues between the so-called black man and woman that are that are special and unique, but that's pertaining to a spiritual issue that the so-called black man has to handle by turning back to the Most High. But anyway, we're going to deal with this issue right here with Miss Amber Cooter or Cutter, and let's see what they have to say. Of course, I'm going to chime in. Plaintiff Amber Cutter dated the defendant, but she claims she broke up with him after she caught him with his ex in his car engaged in sexual activity. Amber and the defendant eventually reconciled, but during an argument, the defendant jumped on her car and smashed her window. This bro don't have no top lip. I'm sorry, how you going to deal with somebody who don't have a top lip? You got to have a top lip, man. I'm <laughs> no, so she's suing. Defendant Lonnie Street insists Amber did not see him and his ex engaged in sexual activity. Look at this dude. He walk in like one of them, one of them black men from the 70s, like Cooley High or some shit. <laughs> he walk in like he looking to see how much money his hoes made for the day. And the whole incident was a setup by his ex. Lonnie claims on the day Amber's car was damaged. He only jumped on her car because she tried to run him over. And therefore, he doesn't know. He's countersuing for unreturned property. Start with you. So the chick tries to run you over, but all you're suing for is, is for is for the return of your property. <laughs> with you. Well, I've known Lonnie years now. We began dating back in October of 2016. Our trust became a little rocky when I caught him in his ex's car receiving oral sex. Um. Are you sure that's what you saw? Or did you see her trying to grab the stick shift in the vehicle? Let's be for <laughs> let's be for real, Miss Amber Cutter. We already see you don't have a top lip. Maybe that's why you had to get head while from somebody else. We had an argument at that time. Um, we had a disagreement, an argument, and I demanded my keys from him. Got my keys. At that moment? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I got my keys from him. I left. When I came back, of course, they were gone. Um, at this time, we were not talking for a while. Then we began talking again, um, started the relationship. Oh, so even though you claim he was getting some head whop in the vehicle, you guys start talking again. So you must have liked the ride that he was giving you. I don't know why he went back to this bra. She didn't have a top lip. I'm sorry. I can't get over that. The chick looked like Fire Marshal Bill. And at this time, I told him, of course, our trust is not what it used to be. So... I asked for a lie detector test because the entire night you already caught him. Thank you, sir. And beyond that, why you why you start talking to the man again if you don't trust him? If you don't trust him, just let him go on about his business. That's how I know that she must like the ride that he was giving her. Yeah, well, I mean, this is a new suspicion. No, it was the same one, but I you wanted getting, to know the full story. Yes, I was getting a, a lie. From him. Well, you saw. What, what exactly is the lie detector test going to show you? And who's going to ask the questions? You? Solani Street on the on the night in question. Did she or did she not 
run her tongue in between your scrotum sack. Yes or no? <laughs> if the shit go beep, beep, what you gonna do? You gonna leave him again? Give me a break. You saw what you saw. I mean, what else did you need to know? I didn't really need to know anything to know else. If they had a longer relationship. No, she just wanted to get all up in his business. She's one of these chicks who was infatuated with catching a man in something. Once you catch somebody in something, it's either over or it's not over. Many of these females are addicted to theatricality and drama in their own life. Once again, brothers, the, the female that is to be taken seriously is the one that can deal with monotony. She is certainly someone who seems to have a lot of baggage. And I say all that just to correlate with my introduction. Many brothers think that the problems that they have with the so-called black woman are going to go away with females of the other races. They're not going to go away. Okay? For the most part, females are females. They all have a similar spirit. Now, when you start delving into the various races, you're going to have little idiosyncratic differences. Why? Because there are differences in culture. Certain females are raised in a culture where the man is the head. In the so-called black community, the man is not the head. It is a matriarchy. So that is the difference. It's not about race, per se. It's about conditioning. It's about mental conditioning and about... Um, is about cultural programming. And I put cultural in quotes because the so-called black community does not have a real culture. It's very haphazard. So it's not so it's not so much that the so-called black woman is quote unquote worse than the women of the other races, is that they have the least amount of understanding about what their role is, and the reason for that is that the so-called black man has his head facing them as opposed to facing upwards towards the most high that's where you get the knowledge and the wisdom from to discipline yourself and to put them within the proper confines that they need to be placed in so that they don't fuck up their life and your own so point being is this he's getting caught up in the same dumb shit that you often hear, times would hear about the so-called black man getting caught up with the black woman about oh i don't trust you well, i don't trust you well she tried to hit me with the car all the shit is the same the only difference is this bar don't have a top lip. Perhaps. No, but it was the whole situation because he was supposed to have been getting my daughter and myself some food and did not return, so... Well, how do you know? Wait a minute. Hold on. He never said he wasn't going to make a pit stop. Or, or a pussy stop, per se. He just went to go get y'all some food. And he went to get him some food, too. He had to, he had to feed his rod. Well, you know why he didn't return. Yeah, you're right, you're right. You're right. But we began dating again, and I was like, with the whole situation with the lies that were told, I wanted a lie detector test, mm -hmm. and it became more arguing. He didn't do it? The lie detector test? No, he didn't. Okay. So... Well, I, I wouldn't do the shit either. Who the fuck are you, FBI? I'm sitting down for a lie detector test with you for. You gonna come and stick some sodium pentatol in my neck? Get the hell out of here. Either we gonna do something or we ain't gonna do something. If not, kick rocks. Have a nice day. Mom, you got to take a lie detector test. Oh, um, come May at this time, we were, in my eyes, we were not together um, because of all the arguing and he was not residing with me any longer. That's another issue. Brothers, stop trying to move in with these broads. That's so silly. If you're going to move in with a chick, then she should be coming to your place. And that's after a long period of, of, of evaluation and probation and as i tell you brothers incessantly the woman is on lifetime probation and the reason why it's a necessity to place her on lifetime probation is because you should be placing yourself on lifetime probation you should be evaluating yourself every day make sure you ain't slipping or going the hell off as long as you're doing that you'll do that with everybody else you should be okay but shit like this is ridiculous Dudes just want to run up in some in some broad's house. The scriptures tell you when a woman maintains a man, she becomes impudent. Maintain meaning what? Take care of that man. You never let a woman take care of you. God forbid you might reach moments in your life where you need help. We all reach those moments in life. If somebody's out there to give you a helping hand, then that's great. That's a blessing from above. You accept it, and, when it's, and as soon as you get the opportunity, you reimburse that person. Okay? You reimburse that person so that they don't have anything to hold over your head. That's part of basic manhood. God forbid you get evicted from your place. You lost your job. You need somewhere to stay. You stay with somebody for six months. When you get back on your feet, you reimburse them half for that six months rent or whatever. 
And if they don't accept it, they don't accept it. But at least you know that you went back to reimburse them. You never let a woman maintain you. You never let a woman take care of you. That's an abomination. All right? Unless you're in a dire circumstance. So I was Before we go further, let me allow him to give some background, mm -hmm. sir. Okay. Pretty much like she said, uh, we've known each other for a few years, about seven, eight. Um, we dated for about 10 months. I told her that I did want to date her from a time before, but... How much time before? Not right when we met, but uh, she was... Like associated five years with my family, before you actually probably. got the date. God damn, five years you wanted that? I mean, this, they must not have many good-looking girls where you from, bro. Because, I mean, shit, come on. She damn near looked like that boy from the movie Mask, starring Eric Stoltz. I mean, that ain't no looker right there. And once again, she ain't got no damn top lip. That's why you run around looking for head from other broads. The broad probably wrap her mouth around, <laughs> around your damn schlong and you had all type of cat scratches on your shit. Probably. You didn't give up. That's a real love. <laughs> if I was in a relationship with my daughter's father. You really father loved her. You know, five. Either real love or real simping. Five years. You hit, hit on her five years early. And and you wait five years, finally get the broad, and mess it up because you had to get your rod sucked on the way to bring him back some milk. You probably say, look, I, I told you I was going to get some milk. I got some for me and for you. <laughs> Kept working on it, all right. Yeah, I mean, shit. Help him out, Judge. How the hell it take you five years to get that? For, 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 it'll take you five years. You better get something that look like, you know, you walk down the street with everybody saying, God damn. You walk down the street with everybody saying, God damn. You, <laughs> you spent five years on that? Some junk stock right there, brother. I mean, shit. Once again, the broad ain't got no damn top lip. Crazy. Uh... From there on, basically what she was saying was not true. She didn't see me receiving oral sex in a car with my ex. That was you for sticking sure. with that story. I'm, your Honor. Man, what were y'all doing? Reading the Bible? No. <laughs> yes, Your Honor, we were. Well, we was reading um, "Be fruitful and multiply," and uh, one thing led to another. And we we went to Psalms 23, and I told her that my rod and my staff could comfort her. And, you know, <laughs> next thing you know, uh, she she got the jaws of life on my Johnson, Your Honor. I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's a it's a funny situation. I know. Who are you doing in uh, the car? I was I was thanking her for the situation that happened. I know you were. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you was thanking her. Yeah, and I was walking to go uh, get the food for the plaintiff and her daughter in question, and a rattlesnake jumped up and bit me in my groin. And my ex woman happened to be walking by. She's a medical technician, and she told me that in order for my life to be saved, she had to give me. Mouth to penis resuscitation. That is what she saw, Your Honor. Okay, I know it sounds ridiculous, but that is what happened. I was out there to get food for her and her daughter and for myself as well. But when I got there, it you you don't want to got the food. It was it was a setup from the moment I got there. My ex, she's crazier than her. What happened in the car? In the car, nothing. It was just what talking. did you all do? It was just talking about what. Uh, I was thanking her because she got me out of a situation, but I found out later she caused the situation. She had one of her friends, I'm not sure if he was a real police officer or if he was just dressed like it. Uh, he, put me in, he put me in handcuffs and he was about to take me, but she showed up and she got to talking to him and she remedied the situation. And I felt like, okay, I should probably thank her for doing that because I probably would have ended up in jail. Look, ain't nobody that, that, that damn desperate setting up that whole situation for you. Come on, bro. What are you like the only man in Wisconsin? What the hell is going on? This shit don't even make no damn sense. I mean, shit, it's just, it's just, it's just you and Aaron Rodgers. And we know Aaron Rodgers swing both ways. So I guess you're the only heterosexual man in Wisconsin. Everybody over there setting up, having people dress up as, as police officers to get you back? Get the fuck out of here. That is a complete lie, Your Honor, because I've already talked to the employees that worked at the location to where I found him, and she said herself that there was never an altercation that night. There was no police officers. There was nothing. Well, look, I don't believe his ass either, but let's say that it was that he was telling the truth. You think that you're going to go to a chick who's desperate enough to set up that whole situation and she's going to tell you the truth? 
she's you know according to him if what he says is true she's trying to get you guys to break up so that she can get him back so uh, i don't know why you would think that she's going to tell you the truth about that situation but i do believe you i think that he was running around trying to be a player uh, the player of wisconsin and uh the dumbass just got caught so this is why I was like, okay, if this is the truth, you won't mind taking a lie detector test. But until this day, that lie detector test still hasn't been. Also, with that, I told her she could pay for the lie detector test and I would take it. She has yet All to right. do that. Whatever. Is that true, man? No, that's not true. We okay. agreed to go have it. All right, you're being honest. All right. Stay tuned. The case continues after this. This bro trying to go through this whole big rigmarole of making this dude take a lie detector test. It's very obvious that eventually... He's going to end up back with her because if she's willing to put him through a lie detector test, um, she's infatuated with what he's giving her in the bedroom. And she's also caught up in the quote unquote friendship that they had. So point being is this, if you're going to accept him back in your life, you're either going to accept him or not. All this lie detector shit. Give me a break. How does he owe you $220 for property damage? Well, in August, um, I was giving him a ride to work that night. We had a petty argument. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were, we were. We had an argument on the way to his job. Um, when we got to the job, um, I was pulling out once he got off the car, of course. At this time, he was in front of my vehicle to where I had to slam on my brakes. And at this time, I'm like, what are you doing? Of course, other words, but what are you doing? And he's like, you just tried to hit me. I was like, you clearly do not know me because if I was going to hit you, I would have hit you. So it was that should be a warning for him to understand that in the future she may get to the point where she is going to hit him. See, a lot of these guys, they think that shit is cute going back and forth with a bitch bl blocking the car and I'm not letting you out. No, and some of these broads, you get them to that point, they are going to try to run your ass over. And if you know that you're dealing with a female who is uh, teeter tottering on sanity or insanity, number one, you should have been left abroad. But if not, don't provoke them. And who the hell is this Medea looking broad right to <laughs> right to his left? I didn't know Tyler Perry was in the courtroom with them thick ass glasses in that. <laughs> you know, hey, man, you never know who the hell is out here. Look at this chick. Maybe she's filming Medea in the courthouse or something. Maybe that's a new sequel to the Medea series. Oh, it was from past experience. You know, he started putting his body a little into the window and I just took my arm. and kind Why of do you think he was doing that? Why do you think he jumped up on the car? Because he's, to be quite honest, he's obviously a simp, overly emotional. Uh, that's why I stated that they give him all this credit for quote unquote being in love. And I tell you, brothers, this that falling in love spirit that is a dangerous spirit is similar to somebody who's on heroin. That's why you read the newspaper, look at the news. These people with this crime of passion nonsense. All that is is someone who is dealing with someone else and puts them on a pedestal to the point where they cannot function without that person in their life or they think they can't function and it leads to them doing a lot of buffoonish things like jumping on the on the damn windshield of a car of a moving car motherfucker think he action jackson or something because i tried to run him over okay so you did then but i didn't i did not try to run All him right. over i was frustrated at the time so yeah i was trying to leave the parking lot but I was not trying to hit him. You were frustrated, trying to leave the parking lot, and he jumped in front of the car. Yes, and that is when I slammed on my brakes. And okay. he had a couple words. All right, so you think he was trying to block you from leaving the I parking do. lot? And beyond that, um, even though I'm stating that she could be some crazy chick and he should know that, it seems like he's the crazy one. Because why the hell would you even stand in front of a car in the first place? I don't care how bad an argument you had. You have to know how to decompress as soon as you get out the vehicle. You're supposed to be heading into work. You that caught up in a brawl, you gonna stand in front of the car? It's clear that they both have uh, some type of a psychological tie with each other that's leading them to make a lot of bad decisions because he seemed just as crazy as her and due to the fact that he's supposed to be a man and held to a higher standard, he's even crazier than her. Right, because he wanted to know. And that's the motive, all right. Yeah. Sir? Basically, it is what she said. A little bit different, though. She tried to hit me when I first got out of the car. So, yes, I stepped in front of the car to try and stop her to see why she tried to stop hit me her. from leaving the parking lot. Because we, we were in a relationship. She tried to hit you. Yep. We were not in a relationship. And you said, we were in a relationship hold on. at that moment. You said. I believe him. They were still in a relationship. Why the hell are you driving and got to work you're not in a relationship with? 
Right. A lot of these females, they like to play games with when the relationship started, when it didn't start. You driving a man to work, y'all doing something. All right. Y'all wasn't in no damn relationship. You would have told his ass to walk to work. So, knock it off. Say, let me jump in front of this car <laughs> to find out why she's trying to hit. If she'd have been successful, sir, you wouldn't have been able to hear <laughs> why she was trying to hit you. You might be right. You'd but, be unconscious. But I expected her to stop, and she did okay. stop. She almost hit me when I was on the side of the car. So you know how you get out, you're on the side of the car? And she just pulled off. My foot was in the way, so I moved my foot, and that's the only reason she didn't run my foot over. I walked up to the side of the car again, and when she did that, she did it again. I jumped up to dodge the, the tire of the car again, and I grabbed onto the side rails of her minivan because she's got rails on top of the car. Okay. She proceeded to continue driving off, so she pulled out of the parking lot, and she was speeding off. At this point, I'm like, I'm not about to let go of this moving car, so I pulled myself to the, to the roof of the car instead, and I'm trying to just hold on so that I don't fall off of this moving car. Well, this jackass. This nigga think he Indiana Jones from Raiders of the Lost Ark climbing on top of cars and <laughs> jumping on the fender and shit. Like, come on, man. Knock it off. Well, man, I mean, he's telling the truth, though. He is really turned out. He's telling Yeah, he's completely turned out, Judge. I'm glad you see it, too. He's a big simp. Only half of the truth. He's standing and jumping. And I'm sorry, but the, that no top lip having broad, I know her coochie ain't that damn good. You turn out like that. Jumping in front of no car like that. He's telling half of stop the truth. Who are you going to stop a car? He said, baby, that car is like I love. <laughs> I got to stop it. You got to stop it. <laughs> but while I was on top of the car and she's driving down the street, I started sliding backwards on the car. So, yeah, um, yeah you know, so eventually I got to the back of the car and then my leg swung off the back and that's what hit the windshield. And this dumbass, he riding on top like damn Michael J. Fox and Teen Wolf riding on top of a damn car. He lucky that the cops didn't see that shit and just shoot him off the top of the car. Imagine that you're a black man in Wisconsin car surfing with a white woman driving imagine if the cops had passed by oh man <laughs> it made his that look like black swiss cheese my knee connected with the back the windshield, windshield. Now you're lying. my Go knee ahead. connected with the back windshield all right and ma'am the damage is that uh, the windshield my back window kick? yes oh, okay and you have an um, estimate for that i have come on brother you doing all that over this? The bro look like olive oil from the back. Look like one, look like one big black line with a with a red wig on. Sir, what's your counterclaim? How does she owe you four hundred and forty dollars? Uh, first, I don't feel like I owe her that, anyways. Um, that's because I told her I would pay for it until she called the cops on me the next day because I showed up to get my stuff. The stuff that I was Why there. Why did you tell her you would pay for it? Because we were together at this time. Like, we were in a relationship. I believe that part. Y'all was in a relationship. She wasn't driving you to work, and you just some random dude. All right, so when did you all break up? I say we broke up that day, or, well, the 16th of August, which was the night after the argument. The night after the argument? The night after the argument. And uh, how did that discussion go? Uh, it wasn't really a discussion. She ended up telling me to leave the property after I had gotten off work that morning at 7 a.m. You went by the and that's what happens to dudes who like to shack up with women. I don't understand how you would allow yourself to be in a living situation where at any moment somebody could tell you, I want you out. Like, why would you do that for? That that shows a serious lack of three-dimensional thinking. That shows a lack of respect for your own manhood. The woman is capricious and whimsical. I don't know how many times I have to say that. I don't care how much they say, oh, well, we'll always be together. We'll always this, we'll always that. Always, when the woman uses that term, that word is in quotes. Okay? The only thing that is always is the most high. That's it. There's nothing that is always. Everything in the flesh comes to an end. Um, well, sometimes it's because both parties will that something comes to an end. And sometimes one or both parties dies. But everything in the flesh will come to an end. So you better understand that before you decide to be willy nilly about your own future and shack up with a woman over emotions. End up like this dude car surfing like a jackass through Wisconsin. Bye. Trying to trying to chase down a bro with no top lip. Oh, you all living together. 
Uh, we weren't living together. So you I went by after you got yeah. off work? Yeah. Or what? My stuff. The stuff okay. that I'm counting. After I specifically told him, do not tell come me to my house. Tell me what happened with your items. Uh, and you went back to get them. I get to the door and she's telling me she's not going to let me in, that she doesn't even want to talk it out. Uh, I'm just sitting in the hallway trying to talk to her through the door and end up calling the police. Well, she probably don't want to talk it out with you because you're more emotional than her. What woman going to respect a man more emotional than her? Despite all that shit that women talk about men and women being equal, the woman knows that women have a nature and they know that a man is supposed to have a nature. The, woman, the man is supposed to balance out the, the emotional tumult of the woman. You're supposed to be a calming force for her and have some answers and some wisdom. You're not supposed to be there more emotional than her or getting carried on back and forth, jumping in front of a damn car. I'm sure the broad pride did say, I'm done. This dude is emotionally unstable. I, I have a child here. What if this guy spaz out? This type of nigga spaz out, kill her and the child. Because he caught up in some no top lip having broad, you know, who might have some good coochie. Who the hell knows? Up calling the police. And then at that point, I just was like, you know what? I'll sit on the stairs at the bottom of the stairs and wait for them to get there so they can clearly see me. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any problems between that. Okay. And that was a very intelligent decision on your part, brother. Because quite frankly, the dynamics would have looked very poor on your behalf. A so-called black man allegedly harassing a Caucasian woman and her child. And the police there finding you at the door. So... That was one of the few intelligent decisions that I've heard you make in regards to this quote-unquote relationship with this no-top-lip having brought. And what did happen? Uh, they got there, they asked both of us our sides of the story, and then they said that she could indeed keep the stuff as collateral, which I wasn't seeing how that was possible for the items that they are, especially. Um, so mm -hmm. I agree. They may have been wrong about collateral, but if there's no clear owner then, yeah, you have to go to civil court. That's probably what they were referring to. Stay tuned. The verdict next. All right, ma'am. Uh, he says he agreed to pay, and you all discussed it. And We did said, discuss it. He agreed to do that because you were his woman at that time. That is not true because even the night that I dropped him off, I made it clear that we're not even in a relationship. I'm not going to go through this with you. Um, I so you said that you made it clear the night that you dropped him off that you're not in a relationship. So when the car ride started, you were in a relationship. That's what one would presume based off of that conversation. Because if you were not, when the car ride started, you would, have, you would not have felt a need to specify or clarify what the nature of your relationship was. I mean, point being is this. Uh, I blame this dude. He's running around chasing a bro who's really not all that, number one. I don't know what else she's bringing to the table, but just the fact that he decided to move in so quickly quickly with her shows that he was head over heels for the female. He was not dealing with her with any sense of propriety. So he set himself up for failure. Um, I do have text messages from that night. He stated, figure out how much the window will be. All right. Did um, he ever say it after that? Let's see what you have. Did he ever say it after the, yes, that he did. night? Because the, the he's next... saying that he believed he should do it that night because you were his woman but now you're telling me as he uh, acknowledges that you all broke up the next day that's why he came to get his things this is all the 16th if you look at the date on this one this is he started the messages with an estimate and it does have the date and the time all right let me see that please once again this is august 16th it says yes this is the very next day I mean, that's what we're saying. They had you all had not broken up yet. No, that's we have broken saying. up. But he right, but that's why she's trying to allege that she told him in the car that they were broken up, which is madness. He at least deserves to have the right to come back and get his stuff. If you broke up with him that day, he can't come back that night and get his stuff. Get out of here. But he's saying you hadn't. He's saying you didn't break well, up. Well, he's until full then. of crap. All right, so you got to prove that though. It's your burden to prove. That he didn't agree to pay for this because the, you're his woman and he and his woman got into an argument. And so, yeah, I'm going to pay for it, but then because you are my girlfriend. But then the next day, no, you are not my girlfriend. So I am not going to pay for it because you were wrong to do what you did. Well, and you say you were frustrated and that's why you were leaving. A person who's frustrated is likely to engage in some type of uh, action that might harm the other. It's very possible she tried to peel off right after he got out the car.
but the fact that he would try to jump in front of the, the, the vehicle as she was leaving, not an intelligent decision. And once again, brothers, 99% of the time, these relationships, they don't get better. They just get worse. If you see that the quote-unquote relationship that you have with a female is starting to circle the drain, leave it alone. Just make sure that you have your own home base, your own house, your own apartment, whatever it is. Whenever you come in together with a woman, it's like two corporations coming together. Two businesses don't just join forces. There's mounds and mounds of paperwork that they have to go through to make sure that everything is on the up and up. And that's the same attitude that you should have before you move in with a woman or you allow a woman to move in with you. All of this happened because he moved in with a chick too quick. Because he was thirsty for, for years and years to have this broad. And the only reason why she really gave him a chance was because the original man that she was with didn't want her anymore. She was a single mother and she looked around and she said, what are my options? And the best option was him. <laughs> Uh, please understand, brothers, once again, all love is, is sacrifice, loyalty, and discipline. Many people are in relationships out of convenience. You have to understand if the relationship that you're in is one of convenience or if, there's, or if it's one of actual substance. Oh, so please be able to discern that before you, quote unquote, fall head over heels in love with abroad. Mm -hmm. Particularly if they're in a car. So I'm inclined to believe you were trying to hit him. No. And you say he was jumping up there to do what again? Well, when I began pulling out of the parking lot after our argument, uh, I did not know he Why was Why do you think he jumped on your window? I honestly don't know because he's crazy. Okay, well, then you I agree with her that he is crazy, but I think they're both crazy. I think that he got out the car, whatever they were angry about. It conjured up the feelings that she had about him getting his rod sucked by... His ex-woman, who probably had two lips, she's mad she only has one lip, so she can't suck him off properly. They got into a big argument. He got out. She tried to pull off real fast. He said, hey, wait a minute. Tried to jump in front of the car, put his own life in danger, and um, decided he was going to come back and get his stuff. And she said, no, I'm not letting you get your stuff. So, so two fools. And your story is unreasonable because you don't know. He's very clear with his story. He knows. He's not unclear at all. So I'm going to go with the person who's clear. He's clear and you're not. Your claim is dismissed. The reason why she's not clear is because all that nonsense about her telling him that the relationship was over when she let him out the car. Uh, even if that's true, he still deserves to have the right to come back and get his stuff. If you get if you get fired from your job and you have personal items at your job, at the very least, they're going to mail you the personal items back if they do not allow you to come pick up your stuff. So that's just basic common decency. Hopefully he don't try to get back with the broad, but I doubt it. He seems head over heels and she most likely does not have many options. So they're most likely going to get back together. Yeah, he's full of because he agreed to pay in the window and now he just got out of it. So whatever. My we story good was there. We were good friends, but then you tried to hit me with a car. I didn't hit you. If I was going to try, Lenny, I would have hit your weak ass. But you missed, didn't you? <laughs> I didn't try to hit you. But so. you missed, though, didn't you? Whatever, Lonnie. Simple. You enjoy your little $100, $200. I'm good because guess what? My window got fixed four days after. Well, if your window got fixed four days after, why are you stressing him for? Your window got fixed four days after. Either you had the money to pay for it or the new sucker who's with you paid for it. So either way, you're frustrated that he got out of the situation. Hopefully, he's smart to leave her alone. If you're going to deal with a chick with an attitude, it might as well be a black woman. What the hell are you going to deal with a <laughs> with a chick, a, a Caucasian chick with no top lip? They got the body of the number one. And she still got the same funky hood right attitude. You might as well just go get you a black broad. But anyway... Peace.